Hey everyone, tonight we've got an A2141, which is an A20 01700 board. It's coming in with no power. It's been reported that there's been some issues with the CD3217s, which is the USB C port controllers. But because this is an A2141, and likewise this applies for the A1900s, you really need, before you do anything else on these boards, you need to check the state of the NAND regulators. Because if there's one thing that these boards are known for, it is for the failure of their controllers resulting in the destruction of the NANDs. And of course, if that happens, well, there's no real point doing anything else to the board. So we'll have a check before we do anything else, before we apply any power whatsoever, if you go applying power to these machines without first checking, then you basically forfeit your chance to get any data back, if there was a chance there. So this has been liquid damage as far as I understand. Um, time for us to check it. I can actually see there's a little bit of damage down here, which is right on the area where, of course, the regulator is. So let's have a look and see what we get. We should be getting around about 400 ohms to 1K. For each side so over here we've got one of the regulator sides this is like the 2v5 NAND what do we got so 7800 that's good yep likewise that side okay that's fine that's ground that's not ground <laughs> absolute paramount that you check these before powering up this one looks pretty clean it's not a guarantee of anything and there we go that is that is a big problem it's not even one ohm it's about 0.2 of an ohm so we've definitely got a short there so we've got a blown cap if we're lucky if we're not lucky it's a dead board if we're really not lucky it's a dead man yeah okay so i would say one of these caps is dead you really don't want to go injecting any voltage either hmm. okay since the 2v5 nand side is dead the first thing we do is we take the regulator off doesn't matter how good that regulator looks once you've got a shorted 2v5 side you take it off one mistake that often happens is people find the shorted capacitor or something and they think it's all good and they power it up and then it immediately destroys the data on the NAND because what's happened is the regulator got stressed by the short circuit and it's not regulating properly resulting in more than two and a half volts going in okay we can actually see there is some junk down in there we'll check that resistance but i suspect it's still going to be the same yeah so now we've actually got to find out where what is dead if we look at the board view in the schematic we can see that We've just got this cluster up here, plus one little one here. This one here is probably in the clear. And then we've got these two here, which might be a problem along with this big one. But so really all we can do is take them off and see when it stops being shorted. If we're not lucky, then unfortunately it may have already gone too far. We're gonna put some flux down just to help clean while we're at the process of removing the parts it's unlikely that it's the big ones but we'll see how we go still shorted still shorted I'm starting to get a little worried now really making me wonder if we have a board level failure here Starting to get a bit scary. Oh dear, that's not good. Okay, so back on this side, we don't, it could be one of that actually. 
Yeah, that one actually might be it. It's got a bit of a different tone of colour to the others. Let's hope it's that one. I can't see any major cracks in it, but we'll test it anyway. And it was indeed that one. Very lucky, very lucky that that was the faulty cap. So the first thing we'll do is clean up the mess. Then we need to replace this cap along with all the others that we removed. Now that particular capacitor, if we go to the board view and schematics, is a 20 microfarad 10 volt 402. Uh, so we just replaced that cap there with a 22 microfarad and that should do the job nicely. In these particular scenarios you have to weigh up the risk of losing access to your data versus the long-term stability of the board. So what we usually like to do is make sure the board is stable and safe, get the data off and then should it be required or wanted we can then repair the whole yeah clean up the whole board make it for normal use again as a general rule though liquid damage machines it's strictly data recovery only it's fine if you're doing this for yourself you can go along and say you know what i'm willing to take the risk i will continue to use a liquid damage machine i'll make sure my data is backed up though but if this is a customer machine, you really need to tell them the risk is very high that it will fail at some point in the near future. That doesn't mean it absolutely will fail. It just means statistically over a series of machines, like many machines, the likelihood of a machine to fail due to the fact that it has been prior liquid damaged is quite a bit higher. It's looking a lot better now. I'm willing to go ahead, put the parts back on and Hopefully we can power this machine up and get the data off it. Down some flux. Try to use the least amount possible for the task. So we're going to preheat the board a bit and that way we don't have to cook the part for too long. We just give the board some nice, there we go. Okay, that one there. Let's get that other part in. Very nice. Get the next one. Okay, we're a little short on flux there, which is why everything's kind of sticking when it moves. Move around, make sure everything's sitting. That's good enough. And now we have to do the regulator. Now, main thing is we've got our orientation correctly. And in this case, the pin one is top right. So like that. And here we go. It can be a little bit tricky trying to find out when those things have reflowed. Check things up close. And that looks like a very nice reflow there. So I'm quite happy with that. Even pancaking, so that's good. All right, so at this point, we need to measure our resistance. Now it's going to be a little bit lower because the board is hot, but it should certainly be better than zero. So 6,700, that's a good sign. That's what we want to see. Now the most dreaded power cycle we can get is a continuously looping 20 volt 250 milliamp or something like that. So let's, fingers crossed we don't have that happen. So 20 volts, it will do it one time though. Okay, so there's the 200 initial. Now the main thing is it doesn't reset. Yeah, that's disconcerting. It's not a great sign, but at least it's not resetting, so that's a positive sign. So we've got one not so great and one positive. What we'll do is we'll put it back into the chassis and sometimes if they don't have their battery, they can get a little bit upset.
Okay, that's a positive sign. We're going up north, which means the battery might be picking up charge. Yes, yes, yes. We've got a fan spin. We've dropped a little bit. That's not good. Okay, all right. It's a good sign. We've got a battery logo. So now we have to wait. We can see that this battery is actually charging. Uh, you notice the stepped behavior here of the current. That's the MacBook charging it up from basically an empty battery status. You want to see something like this if you're going from a battery icon on the display. This indicates that everything is looking good inside the MacBook in the charging circuitry and in the battery, so it's a good thing to see. Alright, so we have a booting machine. We have a win. This person's going to be very happy to get their data back. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. engine about you're gonna get camera shy what what <laughs> you're gonna pull off the chair <laughs>